Good morning and welcome to uh, a video on making a 009 layout. What I wanted to do was to make a layout that would take advantage of the smaller curves and the smaller track work to get a compact layout in. So I built this on my usual principles which people that have seen my other videos will know and that is start with the available space you've got and I wanted it to fit on this shelf um, which is in effectively our, our workroom, our railway room. And that only gives us actually 17 inches across here. I could have the whole length if I wanted, um, but as I always like to do, I happen to have this piece of wood um, in the shed, I happen to have this piece of wood in the shed, and this is 16 inches across by three foot nine long. So the next stage, and if you're gonna plan, was to get this made, which is a passing loop. So I know that if I've got a 16 inch board, I've got an eight inch at each end for the curve. By good chance, this is Pico set track, it fitted exactly. So that was the longest running loop that I could get in, which I'm quite happy with. It's big enough to get a number of my small wagons on. Because the other thing you need to do in your plan is just ensure what space you have got will allow you to make what you want to make. And the good sidings will take two or three wagons. I decided to put, make the most of it, and this is a passing loop in the back. This will be behind a little back seam, so that gives me a small fiddle yard. Obviously, I'd like to have used set track, but set track is 18 inches, and I've got a 16 inch board. So I did reluctantly use flexi track. I don't get on with this at all, but we did get there. Douglas soldered one end for me. I could then bend it round, cut the other end, um, and solder it down. A bit bizarrely, it doesn't have holes for track pins. I've got to try and get a narrow drill to do it. Um, so I've ended up putting a couple of screws in which will be painted out. But the big advantage is I've then got a run around, which I really like. I like watching locos go around. And I've also got some shunting in here. And I've got a fiddle yard, which is not too bad in a space 16 inches by three and three quarter feet. So the next thing you've got to do, you don't have any choices. That's the only track plan basically you can get in there. So at this point, I haven't planned anything other than that some kind of good shed that'll possibly be a little MPD. So what you do then is you go, in my case, to your box of buildings and you start looking for what you've got. So one thing I've got is that, which is a kind of outdoor good shed, very continental, uh, which I got from China for about three pound. So that's nice and easy. Um, that will go on a little concrete platform. I've always wanted to do something a little bit more European, and this is going to be a kind of freelance European. So it's then a question of looking, and I've got a little shed that I got last week from Seaford. That'll be nice as the office. I've got this that I got again from Seaford. It's a little ratio uh, wheels station, but that will fit in there quite nicely as a hall. There's no point getting carried away. At the end of the day, you've got a relatively small little station here. Um, I went up in the loft and took this off another old layout. So this will be a little fueling point and MPT, MPD. That's quite nicely painted. There's some nice oil drums that go with that. Um, and really it's a question of working from there. So I've got a couple of old houses. Now I might not use these, but it gives me an idea of what how things will look. And then I've also got this, I um, don't know if that's in shot. So this is a tractor, a little toy one that's loading logs. So I can easily make some log wagons. Now this is actually from this company, Siku. You see, it, um, you see them in all the garden centres and that sort of thing, £6.50, which when you think um, of the cost of some vehicles, so that's gonna be great. I'll weather it up a little bit. And already then we've got here a fairly obvious little scene. I can have a road round, a loading dock, nice and simple. We've got a station, we've got an MPD. I've got a few of these that I got cheap which are the continental road crossings. So you then realise, well, we can have a road in here to serve the station and the goods yard. So that again is keeping it quite simple. Bearing in mind there's going to be a back scene there. And then I've had this almost from the early days of when we did modelling because we were going to do a, a little 009 layout. Um, it's just a splendid signal box, a European signal box that we've weathered and made to look really nice. And although it's a bit tall, that's going to go down there purely because I want to use it on my layout. I'll probably balance it by lifting these houses. 
So the more observant of you will see that we've got something under the track. So this is track map, which you know I like using. This is actually um, from the Javis range. Comes in a big roll like that. Looks a bit like budgie sandpaper. Um, I didn't want to do the usual grey UK. I wanted to do something that looked a bit more continental. So I've used this. I had to get it, got it on eBay from a, an online shop because none of the actual retailers that I know stock this because they only do the kind of UK outline grey. This was about four pound again a roll. Uh, even including postage, you do need to shop around. Uh, to my amazement, I found people charging £12, including postage, for a roll that cost me about £4.50. So you do need to be very careful with some of these internet companies. Um, but this was um, a really good one. So there we go, that's the outline. Um, and that's not going to take very long, so you've got to bear in mind there'll be a vaccine. We'll put some grass in, but I don't want to spend a lot of effort on it. It's really something that I just want to be able to see my 009 stock on. It's almost like a test loop. Um, so that for instance there, I've started working on another rail bus um, and that's potentially gonna be a DMU. I might build two. That's, we'll do a video on this um, a bit later in this series, but that's just a cut down hoe coach. Um, And then the other thing we're working on is this. Um, again, we're going to do a longer video on that, but that's um, a larger 009 diesel loco um, that's going to sit on a uh, N-gauge Bobo chassis I've got. So I'll have a couple of locos, some rail buses, um, and it, it'll work really nice. So what we'll do in a minute is like you've seen before, um, you'll see me going and here I've done because we're going to try and string this rather than doing lots of three or four minute videos We're going to try and string this together to perhaps one long video that shows it from start to finish So um, I won't say goodbye because we'll be talking to you again in a minute with an update So here we are little update Basically, I'm trying to work out um, You know, I've got the station in here. Excuse the cluttered things. I've been working We've got the goods area there but I'm trying to work out where the road can go and what I'm going to do as a back scene. So I've decided the only way I can do that is to get the back scene built so that I can then work out whether I'm going to put buildings or rock face or whatever. So I've started already here by putting, this is the key piece. So this is glued and nailed in against the backboard. This is just the usual picture framers mounting board that I get cheap. It's great stuff to work with. So now I've got a right angle there. Just show you how, to, how I do this. Um, I'm just going to put the next bit on. We're getting a bit low on PVA. So I'm going to get ourselves down to screw fix, which is where we believe the cheapest place is to buy it. And then this is just going to be butt jointed on there. Like that. It's that simple. And that will dry. And then this in, in a minute I'll do on there. I'm not sure if that one will just butt, but we'll try it. Um, the nice thing with this card is it's quite absorbent and it seems to work really well with PVA. It seems to soak in and dry pretty quickly. Now obviously I will put some strengthening on supports on the back um, when we're done. I'll just make sure that yeah, we'll be able to get to the point, it's okay. This one's a little fiddly because I put that a bit close, but we can cope with that. Um, and then that'll do that quite well. What I'm thinking of at the moment potentially is a thing I've seen before, which is to raise buildings and trees up. And then rather than have this as a tunnel portal, it just comes out of the scenery because you're viewing it from the front. It doesn't really notice. Um, but my problem is on this end where really I should have put the connectors at the other end, but now they're soldered in, I don't want to play with them. So this one's got to be longer and it's then whether I've got enough width to get the road in. But it's coming along quite well. Um, You've shown these before, but that's my diesel body. And then I've started working on another more modern looking rail bus. That's done off a Lima Ho Intercity Mark II coach. And that's going to be a rail bus 
we want like a brake van parcels and then they'll be coupled together and run as a two car DMU so all these projects I've got to work out buildings and all sorts of things but um, we'll see what we do for the next video so just a quick refresher then I've done a little bit more work so I've got these buildings all cheap um, from Richard at Classic Rail they were all 50p each um, that one was a pound so there's there's only a few pounds worth there and I took this part off uh, that which has then given me a longer station building I've now built my station platform just a little low European one I've built my loading platform for my good shed so they're in uh, and then I hit a little bit of a um, lack of inspiration so what I did which has actually got the whole thing working again which is part of what you do when you do this planet as you go along you can't probably see but I've drawn in in pencil where the road will go all the way through and out and that then shows me what areas I can use for everything else so that's kind of all brought it together because I know this can be a car park um, I know my little um, refueling and um, diesel depot will go in there quite nicely I've extended the track a little bit I've got my crossing and my signal box I know now that this can be a rough area I'm going to use, I've used this which is sandpaper to look like gravel and I'm going to use static glass grass just to neaten up the edge. Started working on building a little wooden uh, road over so that there's a loop around the goods yard. And that's it pretty much it. I've got to do some thinking about how I'm going to do the back scene. I think I've already shown these but that will be the little two car DMU when it's finished. I've just got a little Kato chassis to do that. And that will then be the Bobo diesel. So quite a lot of work still to do because I've got to build ro locos and rolling stock. Um, I got these on eBay recently, which are some integral 009 couplings and buffer beams. So they're only a pound each, which is a lot cheaper. So we'll have a go at those and show you how those work. So coming along quite well. And that then sums up how we do the sort of planning as we go along. Um, and now lots of little fiddly bits to do, but I'm very pleased with it. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.